Hello guys, let's continue kinematics with free falling. In part one, we will have introduction. I will tell you what the free falling is. In part two, it will be continued with mathematical aspects like equations and graphs. And part three will be just about problem solving. I start the lesson with a strange experiment. I hold an elephant and a tennis ball at a certain height and then I release both objects at the same time. Unbelievably, both objects will fall down with the same acceleration and same speed. As elephant is heavier object, <clears throat> normally it's expected to fall down faster, but it's not true, provided you neglect air resistance. This is why Galileo did that experiment in 16th century with a couple of balls, because at that time he couldn't eliminate the effect of the air uh, resistance so he did that experiment with a couple of um, similar shapes but different masses and when he released both balls they fell down with the same speed and same acceleration so he realized that regardless of the mass if we neglect or ignore the air resistance all objects will fall down under the gravitational pull with the acceleration of almost 9.8 meter per second square it's an average, it's not exactly this value all in all regions of the Earth, but uh, even sometimes in uh, problems for simplicity, we may take it to be 10. Anyway, you may have this question, what if I throw an object upwards when it's raising, does it have the same acceleration? The answer is yes. Both in raising and falling, the object is under effect of the under the effect of the gravity, so it will have the same acceleration. So gravitational acceleration is the same when the object is going up or when it's falling down. Even at the peak point, at the peak point, you know, for a moment, the object stops, but still it has the same acceleration. But of course, we know that as it's uh, at rest on the top, normally we expect uh, no velocity, no speed let's make a convention very soon we will have a lot of equations so we should know how to determine the values um you remember we started the one-dimensional motion with x-axis but here as the motion is vertical uh, usually we take the uh, axis of motion to be y so whenever a quantity is measured upward it has a positive sign so and downward will be negative um, suppose that for instance we threw an object upward so the initial velocity is positive and if I threw the object downward the initial velocity is negative g is always negative because the gravity won't change its decision it's always downward uh, now we will have a very short discussion about velocity and speed so let's have a stroboscopic Imaging. Stroboscopic imaging is kind of imaging in which I take some photographs, um, consecutive photographs in um, very uh, in equal values of delta t. So let's say the delta t is one second. So in every one second, I will take a picture. So when I throw the object upward, the time interval between two consecutive images will be one second. Here also is one second, and the same for the others. As you see, the consecutive pictures are getting closer to each other when the object is getting closer to its peak point. The reason is that it's decelerating or slowing down. So normally we expect the consecutive photographs to be closer to each other when we go up. Anyway, uh, when the object goes back from the peak point, it will repeat the same procedure, but in inverse um, sequence means that the beginning at the beginning the consecutive photographs are close to each other closer to each other and then we go down more and more they are getting further away anyway uh, the velocity when the object is going up is positive when the object is going down is negative but you should know that the speed is not going to be negative ever never for instance, is the if, if the velocity here, let's say it's 9 meters per second, here the velocity is 
negative 9 meters per second. But the speed is always 9. So here the speed is 9. And here also the speed is 9. The speed cannot be negative, but the velocity, when it's uh, going down, falling down, yes, it's negative. How to determine the displacement? It's very easy. Displacement, by definition, is a vector connecting the beginning point to the end point. So, uh, suppose that the object starts from a certain height and then it goes down. Normally, when you, I connect the beginning point to the end point, the vector is drawn downward, so uh, delta y is negative. In the case, when the object is uh, uh, thrown upward from a certain height, it goes up to the peak point and then goes back again. So, when I connect the beginning point to the end point, the vector is drawn downward, so uh, delta y is negative. And when you start the journey from the ground and you end it from at a point um, above the ground, like this, maybe on top of a building, whatever, the displacement vector connecting the beginning to the end point is drawn upward. So delta y is positive in this, in this case. The last is the case in which you start the journey from the ground and it ends again at the ground. So normally the delta y is zero because you don't have any displacement. Now let's check a numerical case. I release an object from rest and uh, again I will have my stroboscopic imaging in every let's say one second. So every picture is taken one second after the other one. Okay, the vitograph will be a descending line because the slope of this line will be the acceleration, it's 9.8 meter per second. Means that if I wait for one second, the speed will get 9.8 meter per second. And for the other one second, it will get negative 19.6. You see here the gain in the speed is 9.8 meter per second. And it is continued to negative 29.4 for the t equals 3. That's all. This is something we know about the um, basics of free falling. The next video will be about the mathematical structure of this type of motion. Uh, I will consider the graphs and equations. So uh, please immediately go to the next video to learn it. See you.